Okay, with the creative team of Lost Stand, uh, Saving the Elro River's Legacy Forest, uh, Dan and Elizabeth. Uh, Dan is the director. Elizabeth, you're kind of the key, one of the key cast members of the film. Uh, really interesting film. It's obviously beautiful to look at, but of course, uh, has that kind of environmental kind of like, we're worried that this is going to go away kind of connotation to it. So it really has that emotional impact. I'm curious about you guys, first of all, how do, how do you guys know each other? How did you guys meet and collaborate on this film? I mean, we met doing this film, you know, I, I um, serendipitously met, I, I live near uh, San Francisco and was at an event and a friend of a friend introduced me to this woman who works at um, the law firm where Ellie works and they were, you know, fighting the good fight to try to save these forests. And she told me the story and um, to make a very long story, very short, I ended up based on that meeting doing the film and then was introduced to Ellie. And um, before I went up there actually to shoot, um, we, we had only met via doing this, you know, via Zoom. Um, and, um, but quick, you know, I, we, we felt like, I was like, okay, this is, this is going to be a, I, I could tell just from the Zoom meetings that this was going to be, um, th this was going to be a special project. And I also could tell that I was really going to like Ellie when I, when I met her in person and, and I did. <laughs> <laughs> were you pitched you. like were you pitched to do this project like like is that what they were kind of like kind of talking yeah, man, about it's, or? it's i i wouldn't call it a pitch it was um i mean i was at this this funky event in san francisco it's called it's called crabageddon and it's for the opening day of recreational crab season and it's this it, at this beach in San Francisco and it's this day of, you know, going out and catching crabs. It's all these crazy water people. And, um, I, I met, the, so I met this woman, actually, there was this, um, a table there for a nonprofit called Baykeeper, which my dad started, you know, back in the nineties, which basically, you know, kind of, um, is a on the water patrol of San Francisco Bay to protect, um, and pr protect, protect the bay and prevent people from polluting and doing things they shouldn't be doing. Turns out that this woman, Missy, who I met that day, used to work um, at this organization. And that's how we sort of met and connected. And then she told me this story. And I was just um, taken by the story and thought this would actually be, a, it sounds like this would be a great story to tell. And that's how it happened. We met after that and then it started, you know, we, we, the process started from there, but she didn't pitch me so much as she just told me this story of, um, you know, have I got a story for you? And she told me the story and I was like, wow, that's really, that's powerful. We should, we should do something about that. And what, what were you doing at the time? Were you like, like in, in between projects, were you looking for a project to do? Um, I work on a TV show based out of San Francisco. That's, um, it's sort of a environmentally themed show where we tell stories in and around the Bay Area in Northern California about um, the effects of climate change and wetlands restoration and, um, you know, basically organizations protecting open space and, and you know, kind of fighting the fight for the, for the environment. I was working on this show and... Um, I, the season, basically there's, there's a, you know, I just finished the season in the summer and it start production starts again in about January. And I happened to meet uh, Missy uh, who told me about the story in something like October. And so I said, I have this much time October through, you know, about end of January before my TV show starts again, that I can try to do this. And, you know, it, it was a crazy time frame, but we said, let's, you know, let's go for it. So we did. And so did you like were you when you went when when you went go when you go go for it, like would you imagine this to be like a 22, 23 minute like short film? Is this like kind of like the agenda when you're set out to make it? Uh, there there really was no agenda. It was just it was just that there was this sort of urgent need to tell this story with the hopes that um perhaps it would have some impact in preventing uh further logging um up in the Elwell watershed. And so um, I think initially we talked about maybe do a 10 to 12 minute film and um, but but really it was just such a rush and 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 there we did some pre-production, obviously, which Ellie was instrumental in, you know, finding all these people and setting up all this stuff. But we really had 
a, um, you know, an idea of what we wanted to do. But until I got up there and met the people and did the interviews and and figured, you know, what the elements of the story were, it was kind of hard to determine what it was going to be. And once I got up there, I realized it was definitely a bigger story. And, um, you know, it, it, it started growing and El Ellie was so great. I mean, we interviewed her. She was sort of the star of the, yeah. of the film. And um, we had all these great people that Ellie helped lined up. And uh, there was so much good material that it sort of it basically doubled in size from, you know, a 10 or 12 minute story to like a 22 minute story. And Elizabeth, like, I'm, I'm assuming this, this story itself is, is a big, has been, has been a big part of your life. Like this is, you're very emotionally kind of influenced by this, this situation, I guess one would assume. Right. I mean, I was pretty much, as you saw, I mean, I was literally living the story. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was kind of an incredible experience the way the timing worked out serendipitously. I mean, I'm in the middle of this and like Dan said, we were really going for every single angle we could possibly take to stop this timber sale, raise awareness about this logging and this film, um, you know, Missy, who's the board chair of the Earth Law Center, who um, is the organization that I work with, um, was very supportive of this. And so it all just kind of felt like it fell into place. And even though it was last minute, I, the timing was was really serendipitous being there doing the filming over a four or five day period and then just happening to get the news about the cancellation of the sale during that time in the midst of all these other things was, um, yeah, was was really powerful and quite the experience. Um, were you looking for a happy ending? I'm assuming when you started filming, were you looking for some sort of like conclusion to to uh, to the star? I'm just I'm just curious because you're kind of telling the story, but then there's it's kind of open ended, like and one 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 like in a sense, I guess. Well, I mean, when we were filming, I honestly didn't know if we were going to be filming a logging taking place, like if they were going to start because the timing was such that they were scheduled to start logging in a couple of weeks. And so I thought we might actually just be capturing an act of devastation in real time and that that would then shed some further light on the situation. Um, and instead was, you know, delighted to be capturing a hopeful outcome there, but then also knowing that we still have a lot more work to do with protecting the remaining older legacy forests in the watershed and in Western Washington. And I, I, go ahead. I would just add that, you, you know, that we we when when I went up there to film, we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know if and when logging was going to start. Um, and um, it was just a let's get up there and start doing interviews and and start filming and see what happens. And it just so happened that they announced the cancellation of this one particular um, timber sale while we were up there. And and literally we had we had been filming all day. I was back at the hotel and Ellie called me and said, hey, we just, we just got word that they're going to cancel this this um, timber sale, and I'm going to announce it to this group of people who are kind of you know been with me in this fight. Can you come film it? And I'm like hell yeah! And so I booked it over there and got my camera set up, and she made this announcement. But that was there was no intention of having a happy ending, a sad ending. There was it was just capturing what was happening, and with the intention, I think. Our main intention was to, in some way, try to influence the decision to stop logging. And we were, I, I, and who knows why they made this announcement, but it felt like a win while we were up there. And it certainly was a, a wonderful thing to capture. So I'm just, I'm so curious about the people that you interviewed. So Elizabeth, Dan was mentioning that you kind of found these people and they were like, just, just different array, array of, of, of people and the way you kind of interviewed them in the context of, you didn't, let's, but let's put it this way, you interviewed them in their, in the middle of the environment. You didn't interview them in a, in a studio or at, at an office space. It was really interesting to kind of see them. And we're, we're, did you know all these people before, Elizabeth? Did you kind of have, have a relationship with everybody who was in the film beforehand? I did. Yeah, I did know all the people. And, I, you know, it really did fall into place last minute. I think I started calling people with a week's notice or less. I mean, some people were less like Freddie Lane, who 
who um, Dan drove all the way to, to Bellingham to capture. Um, I was calling him in real time after we interviewed uh, with Howard Garrett. Um, and yeah, and he said, yeah, let's do this. And so, um, yeah, I, but I, I knew all the, all the different folks there as part of my network. And I think it's a testament to the passion that people have about this issue that they're willing to just say, yes, like, let's bring this to the world. And I compliment Dan's interviewing the way he interviewed folks and brought out the story and brought out such a, in such a heartfelt way. Um, you know, as an attorney, I have all these facts spinning in my head, you know, and he had to say, like, that's not relevant. That's to tell the story. That's not what we need. And it was, it was really, um, yeah. So I, I think it was really incredible directing to, to bring out, um, what was brought out in those interviews and, and just really incredible, passionate people that, um, I'm fortunate to have as, as in, in my network and, and part of, uh, part of this work and forest defense and in the larger sphere as well. So in one of the, in the, the film is on, on your YouTube channel now, and somebody just recently just posted, I can't believe the government let the rainforest be cut down for timber. That's so disgusting. Is that the essence of your film? That kind of, that comment? Is that basically what your film was about? I, I, I think, um, I mean, to, in a sentence, perhaps. Yeah. Um, yes. I think that, um, you know, what, what we hope to do was to show that, um, you know, this, this is an area of the world where, um, resource extraction is, is kind of a way of life, you know, and it's, it's part of the, um, culture and community up there. So we were never saying, you know, never, never, you know, log a tree again. Um, I think part of the message is that, there are different types of forests and they're, they're, you know, legacy forests. And, and I learned a lot of this in the course of, of doing the filming and, and spending time with Ellie and the others and learning about these places that they're special places. I mean, and we spent time in, in a lot of these forests and they are amazing. It's you walk into these and you, it's the kind of place you go where you, you feel it. You know, there's there's places I've been in my life where you, you feel that kind of, you know, when you're in nature and you you actually feel the presence of where you are. Yosemite Valley, you know, for me is one of those places where there's a power to it and there's a power to these forests and um, they're they're special and they've been around a long time and they support a huge array of um, of wildlife and ecosystem. And um, when you're in them, you can feel that and to imagine being in one of these places and just cutting it down to the ground is almost unthinkable when when you're in there feeling all this and so yes i feel like that statement while it's it's pretty simplified is yeah. kind of the crux of the matter is that these places you know how dare you cut these things down you know mm -hmm. they're they're and and ellie knows this more than anybody and, and I think both, too, yeah, oh, sorry. I was just gonna say like, like there's like a five minute sequence of the film of you walking through the the destroyed, like I guess like they, they when they took the, the land that they took down, the, the, like it's pretty devastating mm -hmm. the way, and you're, you're the first person, you were watching, seeing it from your point of view of what, like Dan's direction of like what we're seeing. And it is devastating even to see on screen. Yeah, and, and Dan was like, I want to capture that. And I was like, I don't really want to know if I want to go there. <laughs> but he uh, convinced me that it would be powerful to tell the story to, to go back there. And I'm, I'm glad we did. Um, and I think, you know, Dan spoke really well about just trying to bring that feeling to people. Um, and then also wanting to show that there are solutions like that the, the announcement came when we were at a, um, you know, an event for a candidate for the commissioner of public lands, Dave up the Grove. Um, and that, that person holds the ability to put a moratorium on logging these legacy forests and protecting them. And so I think just educating people to, to, to learn about candidates and to vote and to voice your opinion and to come together as a community to protect the places that you love, um, and whether or not you quote win, it's still a worthy endeavor to do everything you can. Because like the first 
like 10 minutes of the film is a lot of exposition and you're, you're explaining to the audience what it is. And then they show that sequence with you. And then you're, you're, you're literally crying because it's then, then all of a sudden there's that emotional punch. It's that first person perspective of like, like of the, all the information you guys give, give Dan gives us information or the, you know, the way the film is set up. And then all of a sudden you kind of tell us the emotional side of the story. Right. So it, it, it is, it, is that your daughter in the film? Yeah. My son. Yeah. My your son, son. Did I say guy. daughter? Sorry, I apologize. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> He's got long curly hair and yeah. a, a very pretty face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's four. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of showing the next generation, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, and then, you know, that tree that you planted is going to be like, it's good. What? 50, 60 years it's going to take, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah I mean it shows how long yeah exactly for the next generation these trees like 80 100 150 years old I mean that's a long time when you look at in human life scale and you look at what's happening with climate change you look at how these forests are irreplaceable we can't grow these again potentially you know and so yeah. they're places that are special places to save so you start the film uh by telling the the audience that there was this dam that was like blocked for a hundred years. And then the government, well, the, the, the Washington government paid like $300 million or so to, to open it up and then the Samba can come in and then that kind of sets the environment off. And you talk about the orcas and like how they need, and it seems like, Oh, that's, that's an amazing thing that they did. And then it's kind of turned around, I guess, right? So it's sort of like you're you're giving us the positive of what the government did, and then you're telling us what's happening now, <laughs> I guess, right? So it's not. Well, a, I, go ahead. I was going to say for for me that was um, ultimately when I first heard about this story, um, Missy Laren. Uh, again, she's the one who introduced this this story to me. She told me the story of the Elwha River, and. T to me, the the part that was that really struck home was that, um, you know, the, the I think it was the federal government spent hundreds of millions of dollars um, it, to to remove these dams. They made the decision that that this is best for this area. We're going to do this. They take the dams down. It starts this healing process of this of the watershed. Yeah. And an incredible, incredible environmental success story. I mean, huge. The salmon coming back. You know, the orcas coming back. Mm -hmm. um you know sort of the, in, you know really booing the health of this whole watershed then after they've spent all this money to do an effort and energy to do this then they decide okay now we're, we're going to allow you know to take down forests right near the banks of the river which can have devastating effects with erosion and you know for the um the salmon and the you know you know killing the salmon eggs and whatnot and it didn't make any sense to me and that was that that was for me was sort of the crux of the matter that was like it, it's it seems so mm. pointless and stupid to spend this kind of time energy and money on on a project that's resurrecting this watershed and then make the decision to you know to do destructive things to it and that's for me what was kind of one of the moments where i was like wow this this story needs to be told this doesn't make any sense here so yeah, it, you just what, what was the year that they they they, they, they spent the federal government spend the money on the dam? What year was that? I think it was oh. twenty fifteen. Is that right, Ellie? Yeah, dam removal was completed in twenty fourteen. But yeah, those those couple of years, and it was a long fought effort to you know get those dams removed. And so and what, yeah, what was I the year when they just, they decided to like chop down the trees. Well, I mean, it's interesting because they've actually been the state of Washington, the Department of Natural Resources that manages these forest lands, you know, they have been chipping away at these yeah. older legacy forests, these structurally complex forests for quite a while. And it wasn't really until just a few years ago that different organizations started investigating and finding out where the timber cells were going to be, trying to get ahead of it, really looking at mapping how much older forest canopy had been lost. And the Aldwell sale is the one that you saw that I visited that clear cut. And when I learned that that was going to happen, you know, just like Dan said, I thought this is such a compelling story to show what's happening in this watershed to educate people about the importance of these forests for the health of the whole watershed, the impacts 
that this deforestation has on stream flows, for example, which is why the city of Port Angeles is concerned about this. The sole source of water comes from the Elwha River, right? And the salmon and the orca, it's all interconnected. And so, yeah, I felt like this was really, um, you know, it was, it's outrageous that it has been going on and we're kind of at this, we're at this point where it's like enough is enough, is enough. you know, we've, we've got momentum. We now see that this needs to stop. And so, yeah, it, it, it has been happening, um, unfortunately, and we're really looking at protecting these last remaining forests because that's what's, that's what's left now. And then fully restoring the watershed in you know, regenerative way. So yeah, it basically like it's it, um, it's a simple point I'm I was I wanted to make is that it's like it's political ideologies, right? Where where like Obama's administration, you know, like it's like I guess they 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 spend that money because they they took a long time through it wasn't easy, I guess, like to, to find three hundred million dollars to do that, and then mm -hmm. the ideology changes like through different administrations, and then. Because it's all about capitalism, right? Like there's money to be made from from the, the forest, right? So they see that, well, look how much money we can make and why would we not want to do that in a sense, right? So I think here what we see is like a lack of coordinated efforts between various levels of government because yeah. you have the federal government spending millions of dollars on dam removal. You have a state agency that mm -hmm. is logging, uh, you know, essentially clear cutting in that same watershed where the federal government spent millions of dollars. And you have a local government that is um, saying, wait a minute, this is our water supply. We care about this. Please stop this. And then you have a, a county level government that gets some revenue from these from this logging. So you have all these different interests. And I think it, it highlights how we need to come together and look at things in a bigger picture and, you know, look at the whole watershed and think about what makes sense and where we're spending dollars to restore and why. Yeah. And Well, that's humans in a nutshell, right? <laughs> like what you just described. So it's mm -hmm. it's it's all committee meetings and and selfish ideologies and selfish per like we all what we believe in right so and that's what I felt when I was watching your film it was like kind of like an allegory to to so many different things so many different elements of the world not just the United States but also the rest mm -hmm. of the world right where where people want to worried about the economy and they want to make money and you know but at the same time it's like. We, we 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 like we're we're destroying the planets and we already have because it's like we're doing something unnatural with our evolution but at the same time it's like we can try to save something right and like it's like that's sort of what the film for me was when i watched it and then all these people on the front lines including yourself who care so much and the people you interviewed and then it's like this it's madness and they can't there's like it's like I think these. What I'm trying to say is that these. Your organization, the who funded the film, and you guys are so important because I think that if people, like you said, see people see the macro, they're probably side with you. Like, well, one would assume, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I feel like you know Ellie, more than anyone, is in the trenches. You know, during doing work that none of us see that you know are are going to have big impacts on on these types of situations and um you know it was for me it felt really good to highlight ellie in particular because i mean and ellie i think balances this she's you know a kick-ass lawyer doing really hard work against all odds um and then but she's also a member of this community that cares deeply about these forests and 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 saving them and um and i wanted that reflected in the film and i think it it, it was reflected in the film um but i feel like ellie is you know and the people doing this work they're the heroes they're the ones you know who are down in the trenches doing this work they're living this day in and day out you know um so i feel like you know the 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 ellie's of the world the freddie lanes of the world who is also in the film one of the indigenous elders um, and lots of other folks are are really, you know, spending their time and energy um, fighting these fights. And it's a really tough thing to do. And I just I really applaud these guys. And I felt very honored to tell their stories and, you know, be a part of this. So it's Earth Law Center. You guys work or Elizabeth, you work for Earth Law Center. It's a nonprofit law center. Yeah, yeah, I'm an attorney that um, I, one of the positions I have is the director of legal advocacy at the Earth Law Center. And yeah, we're a nonprofit um, 
We focus a lot on um, reforming laws and policies and recognizing that we have responsibilities to nature and that nature has rights. Um, so what I think our new mission statement is aligning our laws with nature's laws. Um, so really restoring that balance, like I said in the film, is a lot of it, a lot of what it's about to me and taking personal responsibility and building those connections. And yeah, I'm just, I'm grateful for the opportunity and appreciative of this film festival and this opportunity to interview and just really grateful for Dan, like so artfully telling the story. I've just had such great feedback on the film from, from everyone. And I think that, I mean, our hope is that it really touches people in a way that these stories are happening all over the world, you know, and that this sharing that kind of ins and outs of it will inspire people to, to, to join this movement for the earth. Have you, are you, are you guys planning on making more films? Because I was like, just on your, you have a nice, like a solid, <laughs> a solid Instagram following. And then you have this film on your YouTube channel. But it seems that you have other videos, but this seems to be your like, quote unquote, only film, which is fantastic. Are you planning on making more films? Yeah, yeah. I mean, most of my life I've worked in television and I've, you know, I've I've done other, you know, a lot of visual storytelling for the, you know, for a long set, you know, for decades, <laughs> centuries. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, quite honestly, I've always wanted to do a a film that is seen in theaters and that you have sort of interactions and touch points with with an audience i've been to a ton of film festivals and always thought that, that i would love to do this um but my career has been you know again mostly in television and um to take a time out to you know to to do a film and and um it, it just never i could never figure out that puzzle how to how to make that work and this opportunity came up and it just so happened to be at a time when I actually had the time is some time, not a lot of time to put it together. Um, so, yeah, so it was my first quote unquote, you know, film that is, you know, kind of in, in the film fest world. Um, and I'm super excited. You know, it's it's one of these things I've always wanted to do. Um, and yes, I'd love to do more films. Um, we've we've talked about some other ideas, uh, Ellie and Missy and I and and hopefully, you know, um, we will do that, um, but I I love this process and um, and would love to do more of them for sure. Is you you're the organization is the law law center want to do more films too, Elizabeth? Yeah, I mean I think and know Missy is the board chair of the Earth Law Center, and I mean I think that there's a lot of um, yeah I think there's a lot of interest in that just being able to share you know a lot of the movement recognizing the rights of nature. And recognizing, you know, really embodying that and what that means is about a change of consciousness and about recognition of the impacts of what our actions are and taking responsibility. And I, I do actually think the film is a great, you know, way to convey that and a way to inspire and, and move people. I mean, I write a lot of legal briefs and documents and you know, people don't really uh, pour through like 50 pages of, <laughs> you know, legal things that I might say or do. And yeah, although, you know, I might think that I've come up with a brilliant legal idea, like to way to like get that out to people is to, I really do think through film. And so I'm definitely interested in doing that. And, um, you know, I think there are a lot of collaborators who were executive producers on this film who helped support it. Um, mm -hmm. And so grateful to them for, for helping to fund the film and, um, and grateful for Dan for doing it on a, on a, on a tight budget and um, and for all the people who contributed. Um, you know, we had cinematography by John Guthman, who he captured over the years and, and and he's a member of the community as well. And so it really all came out of a love, you know, a love of place. So I would say it's, you know, it's a collaborative effort and that, you know, I, I was um, in it as you know, as myself, as a community member, as a movement lawyer, and also as a, as, you know, a member of the Earth Law Center. Um, so yeah, I think there's all kinds of possibilities for collaborations. Because yeah, because you guys are using the, because it's, you have a night, the people can go to earthlawcenter.org, and then you have a pretty, like, large following already on your, on your Instagram, and it's like, it, this is, this is, I think that's like, well, I'm, I'm biased, of course, but storytelling, is the way that it, 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 it tells the story, but it, like it's a way to to get it out there without kind of like, you know, trying to tell people what to think and how to be. You just tell them a story and tell them, 
an unbiased story because like even your story, Dan, the way you guys put it together, it's like, you're not saying the government's bad because you, you start the film saying, look at the great, amazing thing they did. <laughs> right. So, and yeah. look what, and look how that $300 million, which from federal level is not really that much money. So, but look at what this was $300 million did for this, for, for the, like for the salmon, for the orcas and like this, the, the, the ripple effect, literally the literal ripper effect of the, of the waters and what it did. And then like, let's, you know, let's keep it up. Let's, let's keep doing this. Right. So you're not like, you're telling a balanced story. Basically what I'm saying is that you're not crapping on the government. You're just saying, you know, we got to step up. We got to do more. Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, I think the message is that, um, we can do all of these things. You know, there are solutions as, as Ellie said and points out, um, there's ways to do this all, all you can, you know, you can extract timber, you can, have an intact, healthy watershed with, uh, you know, healthy salmon and orca population. Um, you can, you can have, you know, you use this as a city's water supply. All of that is possible. It just, it needs to be worked out and people need to work with each other and think outside the box a little bit. Um, but absolutely, um, you know, there, there's solutions here. And one thing I just want to give a shout out to, as Ellie mentioned, John Gusman, who is the cinematographer for this for this film, I just want to say that um, in shooting this film, I shot this, you know, I went up to do interviews for about a week in the dead of winter, you know, it was like December and the days up in Washington at that point are, you know, you got l enough light to shoot from like 10 to three. And uh, most of the weather was was pretty crummy, you know, overcast and rainy. So John Gusman um, has, is a photographer and filmmaker up there and he um, allowed me to use all of his footage from all these decades of shooting up there in the Elwha and around that area. Without that, I never would have been able to, to do this film because I just didn't have the time. So mm -hmm. I want to give a huge shout out to him. He was instrumental in getting this thing done and super generous with his with his footage. The B, the, the, all the B-roll, nice put like shots that you got from above and everything like that. Yeah. Well, last last question for you guys. What did you guys think about the audience? We send the audience feedback to you. And and I'm curious what you guys thought, because I'm like not many people know this story itself. So I'm curious what what uh, what you thought of their reactions to the film. Ellie? Sorry, go first. Um yeah, I thought it was for me, it was really inspiring and energizing. And it it made me feel really, you know, I was really just yeah, I mean, honored and proud and, you know, delighted that um, it really resonated with people and to hear to hear people's feedback and to hear how they interpreted it. And um, yeah, so I mean, to me, it was it was energizing because like Dan said, you know, kind of being in the trenches with this work, you have to it's sometimes really hard to take a pause and even celebrate, actually, because there's always the next thing that's happening. So yeah. it, it felt like it kind of gave me a moment to to celebrate and see this as, you know, what we want to do is protect the remaining forests in the Elwell watershed. And that's what we're working on. And we're working on protecting the remaining forests in, in Western Washington, too. And but I can celebrate this, you know, and and celebrate as we go so yeah and i was just really grateful to have that opportunity so i really appreciate you all you know providing that and sharing that with us you gotta celebrate your victories right <laughs> it, it, absolutely <laughs> and it's you know i will say that um you know i've been doing this type of work for for many many years and it's it's very rare to get direct feedback from an audience you know um like i said i've mostly worked in television and you get ratings so you know how many people are watching um what you put out there but you have no idea um how what they thought of it or how it might impact them so to get direct feedback and to hear you know folks talking about um you know their reaction to the film um and that it resonated with them um and you know j just to hear that kind of feedback it's really gratifying um as a filmmaker um it's almost more gratifying to hear from 10 people directly how it may have impacted them than to blast it out to hundreds of thousands of people and never have touch points. So for me, that audience touch point is, is really special. And I was very appreciative um, that, you know, folks who, who watched the film actually took the time to give some feedback. And I was, I, it was, it kind of keeps you going as a filmmaker, because it's a lot of hard work and grinding yeah. to get these done. 
Sure. And so it's pretty cool to hear some feedback directly from an audience who liked it. So I really, I loved it. Well, on that note, guys, both uh, both keep making movies if you can. And uh, best of luck with your project. We'll try to promote as much as we can. And in your like the law center, it's like you become, most people think you become a lawyer and, you know, you're going to make like, uh, I'm sure you're, you're doing OK, but it's like you're not in it for the money. Let's put it that way. <laughs> right. So you're in it for the. You're That's doing right. The, and yeah. <laughs> exactly. I was just going to add that if people want to follow kind of updates on the campaign, they can visit the earthlawcenter.org website that you mentioned and that um, Cascadia Bioregion program, which is the program that. Um, that I direct there and, you know, stay up to date and, and yeah, visit our site. And, and you guys are all too. over the place. You guys are just, you guys are branching out and expanding in different countries, different areas. That's amazing. Thank yeah. You. A lot of good work. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your night and we'll talk soon. All right. Thank you.